Oh, look at that flower. <clears throat> it's a nice smell. It's in the mint family. It has a square stem. Hmm. What do they call it? It looks like bee balm. Uh, that sounds familiar. It's kind of steep. Yes, it is. Um. <laughs> this one is nice for bare feet. Who was it always said this is a marathon race you got me into? Uh, Brenda, you might want to step back in case I slide down. This is well, slick as a pool. Oh, she'll do fine. <laughs> well, you guys have decided not to come. We have a little friend here. Oh, is that a little sound in there? Mm-hmm. Wow. He's, He's not moving very fast. He must be cold. Can I see him? He's a friendly little guy. Mm -hmm. Oh, he's cute. That's good. He's orange. I yes. Mean, like, really neon orange. Hello, little guy. We have so much leaves right now that we're not getting wet. It's going to slip on the way down. <laughs> I'm so excited. That much. Oh. <laughs> that being you lose your shoes? I did. <laughs> I shed them. <laughs> <laughs> Stephanie shed her shoes. <laughs> they were not the proper kind of shoes for this kind of thing. Yeah, I'd probably hurt your feet to go downhill and have that sandal there pressing in. Quite a climb. Uh, <laughs> you okay? Yeah, I was just sliding backwards. <laughs> this is a wild, wild hazelnut right here. And this is a sourwood. And the squirrels have put beech nuts in here. Oh. And now they're just empty shells. The beech nut has like a three-sided. Three has down. three sides on it. Mm -hmm. They're pretty tasty. There's a whole collection of shells there. Kind of hold the hard to have to hold your dress and hold your camera. <laughs> mm. <laughs> uh. We're almost there. Uh -huh. Are you gonna say you're gonna go go down the other way then? Uh, uh if I go if, down down to where the people are. If we go the other way, then back to the water. Oh, oh, I thought that it would get us down not to the water. Well, we could go to the we could go to the rock house, and then, and then we'd have to come back up and, and down this way. Right. In order to, to come back to get back to the water. Yeah. Going to go. Yeah. Depending on what the time pressure is. Yeah. We could stop raining. We could be a place to do it. We would. Maybe it just won't rain very much. We could do it here. Oh, we could. It's gorgeous. One time, Mary and Victor and I came up here, and we ate lunch 
up here. And then I climbed out on that branch there. <laughs> and uh, I'd like to skin the cat, but you know, leave it. Yeah. Oh, they have the best smell. Oh, they smell good. They do. What are they? Oh, wow. Nice. I never saw anything. Well, I've seen these leaves before, but I guess I've never seen them before. Oh. The blue. I, I so much wish that people that see this on YouTube could be able to smell it. Mm -hmm. It's a very beautiful little mm -hmm. flower, but the smell is even better than mm -hmm. the. The smell is better than just looking at it. Mm. Hold on. Let's get it. I'm gonna see if I can. Okay, now it says striped wintergreen. Well, that's not true. Does it produce? Well, maybe it is. Look at look at these leaves down here. Yeah, I think striped wintergreen is. More that is, good. yeah. Look, it's connected those little, to it. Those little berries mm -hmm. will turn red mm -hmm. eventually. Well, that's they do cool. Have that kind of wintergreen flavor. Very nice. I didn't see those leaves. I don't remember seeing a flower before, but I think I've I think I've seen the berries. Oh, gorgeous view. Mm -hmm. What river is that? This is the Cumberland River. Okay. And if you ride it all the way down, it'll take you to Nashville, Tennessee. Oh. Wow. Did you see this one, Mom? Oh, what is it? That one doesn't smell as good. I don't know the name of this one either. Mm -mm. Do you want me to look it up or no? Sure. I've um, seen some, uh, what do they call it? Those little flowers that pop. New Jersey tea? New Jersey tea. Okay. Wow. Oh, please smell. Oh, sorry. Oh, wow, yes. This is a wild cherry. It, it's bloom, it's bloom is gone. It's already bloomed. Uh, so, it's blooming time, it's over. It's wild that they would go across the river.
This is a beech tree right here, and there's the shell, that little triangle-shaped nut yep. shell that we found earlier. That's like the outer husk. Beech nuts are delicious. This is quite a massive sycamore here. Yes, it is. And these are very tall, juicy jewelweed. Oh, wow. I've it's never seen a leaf that big before, ever. Really big. You see how big the stalks are, too. Yeah. I didn't realize that we were going to come around this way. I thought we were just going to go to the top. Yep. And now we don't have our stuff. Mm -hmm. Watch those rocks, they're a little bit slick. Mm. And watch it right there, it's very slick right there. Is this all jewelweed? Uh, well, I mean like this big stuff? It is, right? Um, it's usually pretty fast, yeah. My shoes would have been worse. My shoes would have broken half. How deep did it get? Did your pants get wet? Oh, I think I can see the line now. <laughs> this is number 586 in this book, Oh Safe to the Rock. Oh, safe to the rock that is higher than I, my soul in it. 
its conflicts and sorrows would fly. So sinful, so weary, thine, thine would I be. Thou blessed rock of ages, I'm hiding in thee, hiding in thee, hiding in thee. Thou blessed rock of ages, I'm hiding in thee. Hey, Mom, come, come up here. In the calm of the noontide, in sorrow's lone hour, in times when temptation casts o'er me its power, in the tempest of life on its wide heaving sea, the blessed rock of ages, I'm hiding in thee, hiding in thee, hiding in thee. The blessed rock of ages, I'm hiding in thee. How oft in by the foe. I have fled to my refuge and breathed out my woe. How often when trials like sea billows roll, have I hidden in thee, O thou rock of my soul. Hiding in thee, hiding in thee, the blessed rock of ages, I'm hiding in thee. One time it was raining really hard and it was like a cold rain and we came in here under this big rock and we were nice and dry. And we lit a, we had a fire going, and it was just a shelter from the storm. So in the same way, Jesus, Yeshua, he is our rock. There's the storm of temptation. There's the storm of trials. There's the storm of persecution. But as we are in the rock, Jesus Christ, we stay dry. We have shelter from all of that bearing down on us. This is quite the word picture of being in the rock. Yes. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> Hiding in the rock. <laughs> Hiding from the storm. <clears throat> um, let's oh, our rock. Yes. Number 585. <clears throat> the Lord's our rock, in Him we hide, a shelter in the time of storm. Secure whatever may be tied, a shelter in the time of storm. Mighty rock in a weary land, cooling shades on the burning sand. Faithful guide for the pilgrim band, a shelter in the time of storm. A shade by day, defense by night, a shelter in the time of storm. No fears alarm, no foes affright, a shelter in the time of storm. Mighty ruddy rock in a weary land, shading shade on the burning sand. Faithful God, 
guide for the pilgrim band, a shelter in the time of storm. The raging floods may round us beat, a shelter in the time of storm. We find in God a safe retreat, a shelter in the time of storm. Mighty, mighty rock in a weary land, cooling shade on the burning sand, faithful faithful guide for the pilgrim band, a shelter in the time of storm. O rock divine, O refuge dear, a shelter in the time of storm. Be thou our helper ever near, a shelter in the time of storm. Mighty rock in a weary land, cooling shade on the burning sand, faithful guide for the pilgrim band, a shelter in the time of storm. A shelter in the time of storm. Mm. Mm. Any favorites? It's a life to be sheltered from the storm. Yes. And the Lord puts us through the storm. God sent his son. They called him Jesus. He came to love, heal and forgive. He bled and died to buy my pardon. An empty grave is there to prove my Savior lives. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow because he lives. All fear is gone because I know he holds the future and life is worth the living just because he lives. Sweet to hold a newborn baby and feel the pride and joy he brings. But greater still, the calm assurance this child can face uncertain days because he lives because he lives i can face tomorrow because he lives all fear is gone because i know he holds the Life is worth the living just because he lives. And life is worth the living just because he lives. He does live. He is alive. He is real. That's right. Another request. What about 245? <clears throat> Jesus sent a bird to sing with us. <laughs> Welcome, birds. Uh, yeah, there's swallow nests up there. Wow. And it looks like they're coming in. 
we can be very overwhelmed by life and its challenges. But he can give us grace, give us strength, strength for our fainting heart. 
We have one more favorite. Um, bring in the cheese. Sowing in the morning, sowing seeds of kindness, sowing in the noontide and the dewy eve, waiting for the harvest and the time of reaping, we shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves, we shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves, Bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves, we shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves. Sowing in the sunshine, sowing in the shadows, fearing neither clouds nor winter's chilling breeze. By and by the harvest and the labor ended, we shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves. Bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves, we shall come rejoicing. Bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves, we shall come rejoicing. Bringing in the sheaves, going forth with weeping, sowing for the master. Though the loss sustained, our spirit often grieves. When our weeping's over, he will bid us welcome. We shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves. Bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves. We shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves. Bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves. We shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves. I think Joseph would have liked that song. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thinking of his mother and brothers that he's long been separated from. Yes. All the shoes they saved in the seven years. Wow. Plenty. <laughs> okay. God brought my way through Joseph. He did. He definitely did. Wonderful example. Happy Sabbath. Glad that you all can be here. What can we thank our Heavenly Father for? Continued protection day by day. Yes. Answers to prayer. Swept yes. off the road by the semi this week. Yes. Yes. He didn't see me. Yes. Great. Very grateful for his protection. I'm thankful for a beautiful day. Yes, yes. I was expecting a lot more rain. Yes. Yeah, I'm very thankful that our Heavenly Father held off the rain so that we can enjoy His creation. And it started raining and it made us just appreciate this shelter, shelter of the rock even more. We are at what's called the Rock House near Creelsboro, Kentucky. And this is the Cumberland River, about maybe 10 miles south of the, 10 miles downstream of the Wolf Creek Dam. And this area here, historically, they would gather to meet here to worship uh, years ago. And I'm glad that we can revive it and worship our Creator here once again. Yes. What prayer requests do we have to bring before the throne of grace? We're praying for Noah and Keisha. Yes. All my children. Mm -hmm. All my children. Yes. All of our YouTube prayer requests. Mm -hmm. yes. 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 We're so incredibly grateful that even though the judge ordered public school for summer school that this year Casey County decided not to have any summer school. Amen. <laughs> there was a young man, 20 year old man that was at the uh, your house today for Sabbath visit and uh, he's got an issue with his hands. 
relating to a specific injury we were talking about earlier. Mm -hmm. So you might pray for that. Yes. So I, I told him, you know, some things. Yes. Yeah. Yes, uh, we had a brother come to fellowship with us earlier this Sabbath. His name is Isaiah. And he had some like weakness in his hands. And pray for that. Um, Caitlin O'Brien has a non-cancerous tumor in her ear that's causing her some hearing loss. So let's pray as a body of believers that this tumor will disappear. Yeah. Uh, that our Jesus will get all the glory. Yeah. All of it. For wisdom and guidance. Yes, yes. Definitely. Yes, the Lord's wisdom to guide us. Definitely need wisdom. Yes. Life is full of temptations and trials. We thank for the guide for them because we prepare us the land where those will be no more. Yes. Count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this that the trial of your faith work of patience and let patience have her perfect work that ye may be perfect and entire wanting nothing what's that how does that go in first peter one where it talks about the, the, the trial of your faith being more precious than of gold tried in the fire mm. aren't we found to praise and honor yes the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. I don't know if I have the wording right, but it made me think of the fire. Yes. Going through the fire. Yes. Yeah. I got a little bit chilly waiting through the water to get the songbook, so <laughs> this fire is yeah, such a warmth. Yes. Did it go above your pant legs? Uh, it came up to about here. I was holding them up as high as I could get. Yeah. It's gone down about. Yes. Well, it's since you waited across. Yes, definitely. Calm down for sure. Yes. Okay, any other prayer requests before we pray? I can remember my mother. Yes. Sandy. And my dad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my dad and my brother. Yes. For the Lord's will. Yes. In all Lord's things. Will. Yes. 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 Mm -hmm. Help us to do the Lord. Yes. Mm -hmm. Not compromise with those things. Yeah, victory, victory in Jesus. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, we should definitely pray that we would God would give us a willing heart and the strength to carry out his will. Yes. yes. We want to please God. Yes. Um, oftentimes his will is contrary to our will. Mm -hmm. And it can be a real struggle to surrender our will. Mm -hmm. So that his will can be done. His will is to refine us. Yes. We want ease and comfort, but that doesn't refine us. Yes, we like to stay in the comfort zone. <laughs> but oftentimes God calls us into the growth zone. <laughs> and there's not a lot of comfort in the growth zone. <laughs> and there's just not a lot of growth in the comfort zone. So oh, yes. he... That's good, <laughs> he, he chooses to bring us into the growth zone. We try to stay. No, no, no. Let me stay here in the comfort zone. Uh, and thankfully, our Heavenly Father knows what's best for us. And when we're, when we're willing to be led, he'll lead us out of the comfort zone into the growth zone. But he does give us rest and he does give us peace. Well, um, he'll comfort us in the growth zone. Definitely, yes. Uh, Even though that's not our first choice of where we would like to be. He goes with us. Yeah. Takes our hand and leads us through. Tyus, did you, did you read that specifically somewhere? Or did you just kind of off the cuff make that up? As, you know, that's also true. Uh, a friend of mine, I don't remember who it was, but a friend of mine pointed that out. And I'm like, wow, I've got to remember that. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's really profound. Yeah. Uh, I remember... Growing up, we would split a lot of firewood with a splitting mall. And I remember enjoying the split oak because oak would split so easily. And then uh, we had cleared some land. We cleared out all the trees except for this one 
white oak tree. And it was there for a few years. And then I decided, okay, I'm gonna cut this down and make it into firewood. So I cut it down and then I tried to split it and it just, just wouldn't split. And I, I said, dad, w why is it not splitting? Like white oak is, is a easy, easy to split. You know, it's one of the best, why? And dad said, well, when it was standing with all the other trees around it, the wind didn't hit it so hard. And so it, it was sheltered by the other trees. But when it had to stand alone, it was bent this way and that way in the wind. The grain started to walk together more. And it, it was much stronger grain and almost impossible to split because it had to stand alone. Mm -hmm. So when, when you're being called to walk on the straight and narrow path, oftentimes the family and the friends that should support you don't. And there's times when you have to stand alone. But remember, you're not alone because Jesus says, I will never leave you or forsake you. So you get all this opposition they try to blow you off the path this way or off the path that way. But as you go through this, your creator gives you extra strength mm -hmm. to Amen. be able to withstand the storm of temptation, the storm of opposition, the storm of persecution. I think I have to remember is that it's one day or one minute at a time that I can't worry about tomorrow. Mm -hmm. That's right. The tree that is stood in the storm is a dog player's nightmare because the grain weaves together in a way that makes it almost unsplittable. Mm -hmm. If you put it on a hydraulic splitter, it will almost twist and break the hydraulic mm -hmm. split. Mm -hmm. It will stick on the wedge and you to cut it off at the saw. Mm -hmm. You won't be able to get it back off. Did you split that tree up? I think I gave up on it. I don't mm -hmm. think we ever split that one up. <laughs> It, it surprises so much. <laughs> it wasn't that big of a tree, but it really got a strong grain. Mm -hmm. Yes. And what was it? it must have been only about four or five years since the other trees had been removed. Mm -hmm. But its grain was, you know, it had about that much weed grain on the outside where it just grew in and out in itself. No, it's not normal at all for an oak tree. You know, if you ever try to split it, a tree that's got grain leaves like that, then it would just like that. It would have made very, very pretty uh, tabletop. Mm -hmm. The grain would have been mm -hmm. just very different from the normal. Mm -hmm. Would have been very unique, very distinctive. Okay, let's pray before we begin. Our Heavenly Father, we are so very thankful that we can come to you with our praises and we have so much to thank you for. And you've also heard the requests that were lifted up. I'm asking, Father, that as I speak, that it would not be my ideas, my words, or my message, but I ask that you will speak through me, that you, Father, would impress my mind with what you would want me to say. Give me the ability to communicate your message today. Let me just be a tool in your hands. Let me just be a mouthpiece for you. Thank you, Father. We ask for your presence through, through the Holy Spirit here. We're asking in the name of your son, Jesus, Yeshua. Thank you. Amen. Okay. So as I was thinking and praying about what the Lord would want me to speak on today, my mind was led to 1 Corinthians chapter 13, and which is the chapter speaking about love. And just as I was bending down on my knees to pray, I found this heart. 
I don't know if the lighting is good enough, but. Yes. So that's a confirmation for me that it's the right topic for today. First Corinthians chapter 13. Want to sing this with me, Mom? Mm -hmm. You can come. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, have not love, I am become a sounding brass or a tinging cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy, understand all mysteries and all knowledge and though i have all faith so that i could remove mountains and have not love i am nothing and though i bestow all my goods to feed the poor and though i give my body to be burned and have not love, it profits me nothing. Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. Is not puffed up. Does not behave rudely seeks not her own, is not provoked, thinks no evil, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things, Love never fails, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part, but when that which is perfect has come, then that which is in part shall be done away. When I was a child, I spake as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know, even as also I am known. And now abide in faith, hope, love, these three, but the greatest of these is love. <laughs> okay, there's a, some of the wording there is a little bit different than the King James Version, but it's the main thought. Um, the King James Version uses the word charity but that it's the same meaning as love. What can we do if we don't have this love? Maybe we have faith, maybe we have hope, but we don't have love. Go to the source. Mom says, go to the source. We may not have the love that we need 
especially for the people that hurt us. And yes, if we don't have this love, there's somewhere we can get it from. There's someone who can give us this love or create this love in us. And his name is Jesus Christ. I remember when my little sister, she, Grace, she's 12 years younger than me. I remember I was maybe 14 or 15 years old. And, and then my brother Levi is six years younger than me. And I remember thinking about them and thinking, you know, I don't love them at all. I don't like them. I don't, they irritate me. I don't want to be around them. And I remember just not having any love at all for them. And there was times where I was really mean to them, really cruel and unkind. And I was thinking, you know, I, I know that I should love them, but why don't I? If you're not born again, if you don't have the new heart, and the new spirit, then you're only capable of loving the people who are really nice to you. <laughs> yeah. That's all you're capable of. But if you're born again and you receive this new spirit and this new heart, then you will be able to love even the people who are unkind or cruel or who hurt you. There's an amazing promise in the book of Ezekiel. Chapter 36. This is Ezekiel chapter 36, starting in verse 25. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you, and ye shall be clean from all your filthiness and from all your idols will I cleanse you. A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh. And I will give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you. And cause you to walk in my statutes. And ye shall keep my judgments and do them. And ye shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers. And ye shall be my people, and I will be your God. Ezekiel 36, 25 through 28. So we were born with this hard, stony heart. This stubborn ungoverned, rebellious will, this rebellious heart. That's what we were born with. A heart that's not capable of being guided or being led. A heart that's incapable of loving the people who are unloving to us. But we have a creator who has promised to give us this heart. But we need to ask for it. We need to ask. Let's go in our Bibles to the book of Luke. This one should be easy to remember. Luke chapter 11 and verse 11. If a son shall ask bread of any of you that is a father, will he give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, will he for a fish give him a serpent? Or if he shall ask an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? 
Would a father do that to his son or his daughter? No. Mm -hmm. Verse 13 of chapter 11 of Luke. If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? Our Heavenly Father is willing to give you His Holy Spirit when you ask for it. If evil fathers are capable of giving their children good gifts, how much more would our Heavenly Father be willing and able to give the good gift of the Holy Spirit? Let's turn our Bibles the last verse we're going to look at today, Galatians chapter 5 and verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is, number one, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. So once you have received this gift of the Holy Spirit, the manifestation, the fruit of this Holy Spirit is love. Jesus said in John 14, verse 15, if ye love me, keep my commandments. So without the Holy Spirit, we don't have love. And without love, how can we obey? How can we obey our Creator's commands? So if you have not received the Holy Spirit, I encourage you today, don't wait. Go find a quiet place where, wherever you can and say, Father in heaven, please give me this good gift. I am your disobedient child your disobedient son or your disobedient daughter, but I want this good gift of the Holy Spirit so that I can have this love. The manifestation of this love will enable me to be able to obey you. And then you start on the most amazing journey <laughs> that's ever possible. Once you do this, you start on a journey beginning in darkness that ends in light. You start on a journey that has begun in misery and tears and it ends with the Father Himself wiping the tears from off your face and comforting you and welcoming you into His home that as the Father's house has many rooms. It has so many rooms and it's one big house for His huge family. And he knows your favorite colors. He knows what you like and, he, and what you don't like. And Jesus said that he would go. He said, I, I will prepare a place for you. If it were not so, I would have told you. He said, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be with me also. Whoever you are, wherever you are, there is a special room just for you. Will you disappoint your heavenly father by hanging on to sin, by hanging on to your stony heart? There'll be an empty room if you're not there. But if you're willing to make this request, you'll get this gift of the Holy Spirit. He'll put that love in your heart. He'll take this stony heart out of you and he'll give you this new heart. And then you'll walk in this life of obedience, this life of holiness, this life of purity. Don't disappoint your Heavenly Father. Have you ever wanted to give someone a good gift and they said, no, I don't want it. I have, and I felt disappointed. I wanted to give something good, but they didn't want to receive it. They didn't want it. How much more could you disappoint your Heavenly Father if you won't receive the good gift that he wants you to ask for 
He wants you to receive it. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God and in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. I go to prepare a place for you. The Lord is coming. Are you ready? The Lord is coming. Are you ready? Would your heart be right if he came tonight? The Lord is coming. Are you ready? Why will you wait, my brother? Promises of God all are true. Jesus bought your life on Calvary's mountain, and soon he will come again for you. The Lord is coming. Are you ready? The Lord is coming. Are you ready? Would your heart be right if he came tonight? The Lord is coming. Are you ready? Any other thoughts or scriptures that the Lord may have laid on your heart to speak before we close? Mm. Uh, verse 19 of First John 4 says, We love him because he first loved us. Mm. So I like that, that he, he originated the love that we share with others. And I really like Proverbs chapter 4, verses 18 and 19. I'm going to read 19 first. Proverbs 4, verse 19, The way of the wicked is as darkness they know not at what they stumble but verse 18 says the path of the just is as a shining light that shines more and more unto that perfect day so praise the lord god can grow love in us mm. yes that our love can grow um, by his power yes the exciting part is he'll give us love for those who are very unlovely and we will find in our hearts that which is not human. Yes. It is the author of the divine. Give us the care and compassion for those who have been mean to it. Yes. Yes. <clears throat> One time, uh, some friends of mine, in the course of conversation, um, he got mad at me and he's like, Get in your buggy and leave. And it was all heated up. And so I said, okay, I'm, I'm leaving. So I left. And then I prayed. And I said, Father in heaven, please um, give me an opportunity where he needs my help. And I can help him. And then later there was a snowstorm. And the roads were really slick. And so his vehicle got stuck. And he went to an Amish neighbor and said, hey, could you maybe get your horses and pull my vehicle out? And he was like, oh, I don't know. I, I, um, I'm afraid my horses might get hurt or something. I, I'm not comfortable with that. And he's like, well, the Amish man said, well, I could drive you somewhere in my buggy. And so he's like, well, where do you want me to take you? And he's like, well, I guess take me to Titus Morris. So he came and he's like, I, I, um, my vehicle's stuck. Could, could you maybe pull me out? And so I said, sure. So I hooked up my horses and went out there 
and we got him unstuck. And so it, the people that may be rude to you or treat you wrong, you can pray and ask your Heavenly Father to give you situations opportunities. and opportunities where they need your help and where you can help them. And there's been uh, numerous situations where I have prayed this prayer where people that were angry at me, please, Father, give me an opportunity where they need my help and I can help them. I've seen it over and over. That's something that you can do and you'll see how our God is a master of circumstances and he can arrange things in such a way that the people who may have mistreated you need your help or maybe they're angry at you. Maybe you have wide differences, uh, but he can bring things about so that there's restoration, a new heart. Anything else? So we were talking about the oak tree that was after all the other ones got cut off around it, it became strong. And then your sermon that you gave, it made me think of when I first decided to dress modestly. Mm. And I didn't realize that me just deciding to dress modestly would be such a big deal to other people. So I first started out like wearing Bermuda shorts and tank tops instead of spaghetti straps. And I thought that was being modest. And as I, as I, uh, <laughs> God uh, raised the standard on you. Didn't yes. You? Your, your understanding grew. <laughs> yes. So as I continued learning, I started wearing like knee length skirts. And when I started wearing the knee length skirts, I started wearing them every day. So I no longer was wearing any type of pants, it was skirts. And then I learned that they needed to be longer. And so people had seen me making these changes and I really didn't think it was any big deal. I didn't think anyone would ever say anything to me about it, but people did say things to me and they said like, you're just trying to earn your way to heaven and you're just doing that because <laughs> no. you want people to think that you're this great person. And I was like, no, I'm doing this because this is what the Lord's told me to do, it's but righteous. they didn't believe me. Yeah, it's right. And yeah. so I was, it was, it was the hardest thing that I ever went through. Mm -hmm. And it seems like something so simple but the people that were closest to me were so upset by it. And I had to decide, you know, am I going to keep doing what God wants me to do and keep going through this persecution? Or am I going to just wear the other clothes and not wear skirts anymore and wear pants? And I decided the Lord wants me to be modest. And I believe that that's wearing skirts and dresses and so whatever happens happens and that and so <laughs> he gave you courage i'm yeah. still the only one in my family and in my married family that has this belief that women should wear dresses and skirts and so it's not been easy and i have family who will say like you're gonna wear that and that don't approve but like i finally feel like that strong oak tree where it doesn't bother me anymore mm -hmm. and i'm not offended that they don't like my choice of clothing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we had a, a brother and sister that came to visit from michigan austin and hannah and they had grown up in a sunday keeping denomination and then when they learned about the sabbath their parents said well you can't live here anymore and so they spent the first night in a vehicle in walmart parking lot um, and so now their relationship with their parents is good but uh, when you stand up for the truth of god's word satan will try to use the people that are closest to you to discourage you or dissuade you, talk you out of it. 
if he can, he'll use the people who are closest to you. And like that song says, Father, lead me day by day, ever in thy own sweet way. Teach me to be pure and true. Show me what I ought to do. Three thirty one. on cheerily help me patiently to bear pain and hardship toil and care may I do the good I know be thy loving child below then at last go home to thee, evermore thy child to be. The song says, When all alone I stand, shield me with thy almighty hand. When I'm tempted to do wrong, make me steadfast, wise, and strong. And when all alone I stand, shield me with thy mighty hand. Okay, any other thoughts before we close? One thing I forgot to say was, it was more of my friends and my church family that I actually got persecuted from mm -hmm. like I would hear rumors come back to me and it was just shocking to me because you wouldn't expect your church family to look at you negatively just because you want to be modest yeah and follow the teaching from God's word yeah yes I went through similar experiences mm -hmm. in my young years mm -hmm. when you all were growing up mm -hmm. and learning these principles mm -hmm. but god is faithful amen i'm so thankful mommy that the word of god was a higher authority to you than popular opinion mm -hmm. yeah or the opinion of your friends yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. it's it's not easy to be different than the world, but be different for Jesus. So um, I found it to be difficult sometimes to show love to people who are, you know, being honorary or persecuting me or, you know, causing my friends trouble. And I find myself kind of getting, you know, fed up with it or maybe getting angry. And I, I know it's, I know it's not the right way. 
so I feel convicted by this. So it's uh, it's been a good you know thing for me to hear Titus. So. Praise God for how the Holy Spirit works. Well, we want to <laughs> see Christ in us. Yeah, that's different. So we're going to be different for Jesus. He's going to make us different for Him. Yes. And it will honor Him. Yes. It will. Angels in heaven will sing in happiness. Yes. As they see us giving ourselves fully to Him. As soldiers in the Lord's army, we march to a different beat than the world does. Mm -hmm. As Christians, the way we dress is different. The music that we listen to is different. Very different. The diet that we eat is different. Daniel's diet was so much different than all the other students that were in that course of study. Our lifestyle, just everything, so much of, of who we are, how we think is different than the way the world looks at it. The Bible speaks of becoming fools for Christ. Mm -hmm. We become fools in the eyes of the world. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they cannot understand in the time of Rome, when the early Christians were being persecuted, there was a Roman writer. He was observing these Jewish believers and these Gentile believers, he, the early church. And he said, it's so strange. They don't attend the national games. <laughs> and they're told to renounce their faith, but they're willing to die over this God that they can't see. They don't look like us. They don't talk like us. They don't adopt our customs. They live in this world, but they live as though they're part of another world. Amen. And he accurately <laughs> described how it is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, this world is not my home. This world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. If heaven's not my home, then Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Oh Lord, you know I have no friend like you. If heaven's not my home, oh Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. And I can't feel at home in this world anymore. This world is really not our home. We're only here for maybe 70 years or 80 years, maybe 90 years, maybe on occasion 100 years, but that is so short compared to eternity with our Heavenly Father. Not even a puff. <laughs> and with our Jesus. It is so short. The Bible says that our life here is like a vapor that vanishes. One thing I've heard you say before is, like if you were on trial, or if you were a Christian or not, would they be able to prove it? <laughs> yes, if you were on trial for being a Christian, would there be enough evidence to convict you? <laughs> yes. <That's right. laughs> Do you really have the characteristics of a Christ follower? Mm. Or do you just profess, to, do you say that I'm a Christian? Mm. If, if somebody told you, well, I'm a surgeon, but you never see a knife scalpel in his hand dressed as a bricklayer, I, w would you believe him <laughs> that, that he's a surgeon? You know, it, uh, everything about our life, our actions speak louder than our words. So either by our actions, we're showing that, yes, we are a Christ follower, a Christian. Or by our actions, we're saying that we love the world and that this world is our home. And if this world is your home, this is all you have. Just a few years of pleasure here. But if this world is not your home, and if your home is up there, then you'll be willing to deny yourself of Satan's sinful pleasures, you'll deny yourself, you'll take up your cross and you'll follow, you'll follow Jesus. If any man come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross and follow me unto life eternally. 
deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow Jesus. He is the way, the truth, the life. How do we deny ourselves? Well, we want to grab that cool beer and drink that beer. But then we think, hmm, that wouldn't be setting a good example for other people. Instead of picking up that beer, I'm going to pick up my Bible and I'm going to see what my Heavenly Father has to speak to me in His Word. Denying yourself is where you think, oh, I want to go and buy this revealing clothes so that I'll get lots of attention and people will see the beautiful body that I have. I want the attention. Denying yourself is where you realize, no, the Word of God says for me to dress modestly. Uh, this is this body that God has given me. I want to keep it covered and concealed because I want to obey my Lord. I don't want people to have attention to my body. I want them to see my smiling face and the joy, the radiant joy that comes because Jesus is my Savior and He has set me free. Denying yourself is where you may have a very high paying job, demanding career, and you think, wow, my Heavenly Father has given us children. I need to spend time teaching them in the Word. I'm going to take a lower paying job. I'm going to work less hours so I can invest in the education of my children to lead them in the ways of the Lord. Denying yourself is where you love that sugary drink, that Coke or that whatever it is. And you think, no, instead I'm going to drink water because God has given me this body and I want to be healthy so I can speak his words. I want to be healthy so I can help my neighbor when he needs my help. I will keep this body healthy so that I can be of service to my king. Throughout our life, we will have opportunities to deny ourselves of what we want to do. But we find that when we deny ourselves of those sinful pleasures, that we have this satisfaction, we have this joy, we have this fulfillment that nothing that the world could offer us could ever compare. It can never compare. What advice do you have for people who are convicted by this message and don't feel like they would be convicted of being a Christian mm. in their question. current life? Mm. Thank you for asking that. Yes. So you find a quiet place and you say something like this. Father in heaven, I'm not strong enough to stand against the opposition of what other people think about me or what my friends or my family, they think I should do. I'm not strong enough to stand against this opposition. But I see you leading me and I see what you said in your word. And so I'm asking, Father, that you would give me this burning conviction. You would give me this strength to swim upstream against the current. Strengthen this desire, strengthen this conviction, strengthen this leading that I feel in my heart. And then he will give you the courage that you need. He'll give you the strength that you need to go contrary to the current of popular opinion. He'll do it. He'll give you the strength. I think one of the best places to look is in mission stories where missionaries who sacrifice the comforts of life, the nice house, the easy place to live, and they've gone and lived in countries where people are very poor and they don't really know how to live healthfully and they just teach simple means to live healthy there, like basic sanitation that we know. And the people just, they love them. Mm -hmm. They are sad when they leave. They are in tears when those people go home to their country because they have endeared themselves. They've invested themselves and others in winning them to a better life than they have known before. And that is what Christ does for us. He wins us to a better life gives us a better life to live, gives us greater enjoyment and things that we'll never regret or be sorrowful about. So, you know, God says that at his right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. I've never met a Christian who surrendered to Christ and said, oh, I'm so sorry I did that. 
Uh, no, they're always glad they Amen. did. Amen. You know, they're always, oh, he's made my life so much better, I can hardly wait for what he's going to do next. You know, uh, so when you look on those people and you see the joy that they have, especially at the end of their life, and they're looking forward with hope, where others come to the end of their life and they have no hope. Their life is not full of the joy of serving the Lord. I had learned in my upbringing and also with raising my children what value there is in getting them involved in helping others. And children are just so precious. It's, it's very easy to reach out to people when you have children because they are just so sweet. Our children would receive such satisfaction with us going to the nursing home and singing and, and adopting grandma and grandpas at the nursing home and such things like that. I just went to Missouri to visit my grandchildren and my little four-year-old grandson, Philip, we were in a thrift store and I gave him one glow tract at a time. And a Bible he, tract. Yes, yeah, a little, little gospel tract. And he is a sanguine, I mean, he's the friendliest little fella. And he would just go to everybody, oh, would you like a paper, you know? And, and everybody was just so happy, you know, they just, everybody was just smiling. And he just, he would come back to me, I need another one, I need another one. And it just made him so happy. And so I was grateful that God led me in various ways. Someday I might uh, share a story of how the Lord got my children involved in really wholesome outreach. But what a blessing it was in our family for our children to learn to find satisfaction in serving others. And in that is serving Christ by, by sharing God's love with others. And that is something when we ask about being a Christian is finding some sort of ministry to join. Is there something, is there somewhere where you can help someone else? There's n no happiness better than helping someone else. Mm -hmm. There was a missionary years ago and he went to Africa and it was known as the white man's grave because so many white people, American people that would go over there, or Europeans that would go over there, they would die of malaria or other diseases. And so there was a missionary that had gone and he decided not to get married because he didn't want his wife to die over there. And so he just committed himself to sharing the gospel there and he worked to end the slave trade and also there was so much fear of the evil spirits that the people lived in and he brought them the good news that through Jesus Christ we don't have to be afraid of the evil spirits we can live a life of courage and confidence in Jesus and so some of the older African women asked him why have you never married and he said, well, it would be too much to bring a, a white woman over here. She couldn't handle this life. And they cried and they cried and they said, oh, you, you gave up your dream of getting married and having a woman because you wanted to come to us mm -hmm. and tell us about this Jesus mm -hmm. and what he can do. Mm. And he kept on saying, we're so sorry for you. We're so sorry for you. But he denied himself. He took up his cross and followed Jesus. Mm. So for different people, there will be different crosses to bear. Um, like Daddy said, you'll never meet a Christian who says, I, I regretted the decision that I made. The Apostle Paul lost his life because he chose to spread the gospel. He was executed. And at the end of the days, he said, I have fought the good fight. I have run the race. I have finished my course. Therefore, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And not to me only, 
but to all them that love his appearance. May that be true of every one of us. Amen. Any other thoughts before we close? Our Heavenly Father, we are so thankful that you have spoken us, spoken to us through your word. We're asking, Father, that you would give us this new heart, that you would work this miracle in our hearts that we could love even those who are cruel to us. Thank you, Father, for doing this miracle. We ask for the gift of your Holy Spirit that we would be capable of this love being manifested through us and in us. We thank you that you sent your only son and that through him we have hope and we have a way out of this wicked world. We thank you and we pray in the name of your son, Jesus, Yeshua, amen.